Hello, this is an adaptation of the Cartwright tutorial. Since the original lesson had no audio, but is going to assist those of us that like to hear the lesson at hand as well as read the notes. But we'll use a goal pointer and the actual tutorial will use a white arrow. All movement, other than the goal pointer, is done by the original lesson. This lesson is about carving in plastic. Hello, this is Bud. I'm not going to necessarily read each and every word on the flashcard, but we're going to cover the lesson and keep the concepts of the carve right lesson. And this is about carving in plastic. There are several th helpful things to remember when carving photographs in plastic. Uh, typically, people are going to backlight, um, so we're using a, a semi transparent plastic. Uh, to do this, we recommend you start with a quarter inch thick uh, piece of polycarbonate Lexan or extruded ac acrylic plastic. That's Lexan or extruded acrylic. These materials can be found at most plastic supply distributors. Uh, other common plastics uh, melt at low temperatures and are not to be used in this machine. Again, polycarbonate, lexan, or extruded acrylic. You will have to uh, create a jig to hold the plastic in order to insert it into the machine. The simplest form of jig is a piece of wood that the plastic can be attached to. You can use hot glue, double-sided tape, countersunk screws, are all acceptable ways of attaching the plastic uh, to your your board or your jig. Uh, you can make other more complex jigs uh, to suit your particular purpose. We suggest you leave the paper back on the plastic until the machine has gone through the measurement process. Otherwise, the optical edge sensor may not be able to find the edges of the plastic. Masking tape can be used to suit this purpose if the paper is not present. You will want to remove the paper from the top of the workpiece before you start cutting because the paper will wrap around the bit. I'm going to bring this down now to the actual size of the computer program and what we're working with and I'm going to click next. Okay, our first order of business once the picture has been imported and placed is to make sure that board thickness is a quarter of an inch, 0 0.250. Clicking the right mouse button anywhere over the non-car portion of the workpiece will bring up a menu that includes the board settings. Uh, this option can be found under the edit heading on the main menu bar. And you're going to see them move, come down to board settings. And now they're going to make the thickness 0 0.250 and click OK. Now they're going to rotate and zoom the workpiece to get a better view of what the carving is going to look like. Again, this is the tutorial to doing that. I'll bring it down so you can see them go through their movements. And there is another tutorial on how to do this. Every image is different, but we have found that the depth approximately one-tenth of an inch provides the best results. Make sure that the maximum depth is no more than one eighth of an inch, which would be a 0.125. Any deeper, and you put undue stress on the machine. Plastic is hard, and you can cause trouble. So 0.125 is your maximum. Adjust both the depth and height field may be necessary when carving in plastic, 
you can think of the depth field as the brightness adjustment, overall intensity of the white, and the height field as the contrast adjustment, the intensity difference between dark and light. So they're going to the depth, and they're going to study it one-tenth. And now they're going to adjust the height. Remember this machine is expecting the size of the material that you define in the board settings, not the size of the picture that you add to the material. Always make sure that you clean the machine after each plastic carving. Plastic chips can get into the gears, pulleys, belts, and other components if left in the machine. The same is true of wood, but plastic is much harder and will cause problems much faster. And that appears to be the end of the lesson.